In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. On the way to, to Mass here in Tannersville, Pennsylvania, in the Pocono Mountains, I was able to listen to uh, the talk of President Trump. He, he's in I Iowa at one of the big football games, college football games. So uh, the people are very happy he's to receive him and with loud cheers. And of course, uh, our country is, is in a very desperate situation. We have seen many countries fall to communism. China uh, shines on the top of the list. And they want to impose everything. Uh, as the president said, China makes all the battery operated cars and that's what they want to impose on everybody in the next uh, eight years, which is uh, just another furtherance of communist domination over our country. The Virgin Mary warned the countries will fall one by one to communism. Russia will spread her errors throughout the whole world. As long as men reject Christ, as long as men ignore the request of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Pope must consecrate Russia with all the bishops to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. No games, no humanitarian words, no uh, socio-political, socio-economic words. Just do the consecration as she asked. That's not been done even by Pope Pius XI and twelfth, who were good popes and should have done it. And then he, the president, listed a whole list of woes brought on by this administration in the last uh, three, four years of disaster, of the grip of socialism and the passing of more laws, pro-abortion, and, and even attacking babies who survive an abortion, who, sh who should be s supported by life. In some states, like Virginia, passed, let him die. So this is, <clears throat> if Cardinal P was alive today, or St. Pius X, they would write or, or talk to Pres President Trump. And they would encourage him, no doubt, in the right direction. Turn this country away from socialism and communism. And he calls them the Marxists, and he's right on all that. And it's refreshing to hear uh, a political leader uh, condemning the whole transgender surgeries, and he will ban all that if he comes in. And he wants to also to restore the, the paper ballot for voting, which is obviously the only route to go in this system of modern democracy. But if Cardinal P was alive today, he would come, he would talk just like he did to Napoleon the third. He talked to the big emperor of France and said, look, your <laughs> dreams of the Republic is all going to collapse. If you don't want the reign of Christ the King, you will not have the reign of peace and security and prosperity in this nation. It'll be decadence and disaster. If we, if you refuse to proclaim the kingship of Jesus Christ. And of course, Napoleon ignored him. And France, look what it is today. Over just about a month ago, uh, Muslims burst through a busy street and slaughtered with machetes over 180 French people. Did the media record this? No. And they won't because it puts all the immigration nonsense into a bad light and all the liberals and the enemies of Jesus Christ want to destroy nations they want they want to dissolve borders so that people don't feel they belong to one nation one people they want to dissolve all that so the people become easy prey to the dictators at, on the top the globalists who are in fact preparing for the great dictator 
foretold by the Holy Ghost in Scripture, the Antichrist. That's what Pope Francis is preparing for. He's one of the, definitely one of the prophets of the Antichrist. He's certainly one of the precursors of the Antichrist, along with Pope Benedict XVI and Pope John Paul II and Pope Paul VI. The scripture mentions a number of pre precursors to the Antichrist. But these are very serious ones because they are trying to change our Catholic Church and bring in a different church. You can read a very good article recently that came out of the remnant showing how the philosophy and the sayings of Yves Congar, one of the modernists at Vatican II, who was buddies with Cardinal Ratzinger, how he declares we need a separate church, a different church. That's the goal of the, of the modernists, to metamorphosize the Catholic Church into a different church. And hence the rise of the traditional Catholics since Vatican II. Since 1965, the rise of traditional Catholics all over the world. We will not submit to this new religion. We will not submit to the Vatican II new mass and new philosophy and new theology. We, we stay with the religion Christ gave us, the apostles gave us, the Catholic Church always guided and shielded and proclaimed. So <clears throat> here's words from Cardinal P. What he would say today, if you ask me at this moment who we are to party, what party we belong to, I will answer without hesitation, we are and we will be among you the man of God. He's talking to his diocese when he was installed as a bishop. We will always be of the party of God. We will engage all our efforts and consecrate our entire life to the service of the divine cause. And if we were to adopt one rule of action, it would be this. Instaurare omnia in Christo, to restore all things in Christ. And he says, What essentially characterizes the modern age is that the world has now been separated in, into two parties along a clearer dividing line and according to a more frank opposition than at any other age. That is, the party of God versus the party of man, or if you prefer, of the prideful genius that derives, that drives him. The struggle between man and God has never been more open and more direct. No other generation had broken its every pact with heaven or so absolutely. No society had ever spoken to God with such resolution or audacity, telling God, be gone, depart from us. Man had never set himself up as a God on earth with greater insolence and pride. He thought he had already vanquished. The old dream of human pride was thus to become a reality. Man was to be his own God. And this is the modern man. We don't submit to Christ to his laws. We don't want his commandments. We don't want his church, the Catholic Church of tradition. Most men can, don't want it. They want freedom, 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 but no submission to Jesus Christ, whom God has sent. So our Lord Jesus Christ is not an option. He's not, oh, you have an option to submit to him. No. Christ is sent by the Father as the only answer, as the only way to the Father. So for modern governments and modern politicians, even the best of them, to not proclaim the, the reign of Christ the King, to ignore the reign of the Sacred Heart of Jesus is an unspeakable crime. And God, God cannot bless nations that ignore His only divine Son. Cardinal P. continues, One could easily have believed that the son of perdition, that's the Antichrist, announced by St. Paul, had appeared on the earth, or at least that all the elements he was to embody awaited only their unification in a, in a single person to constitute the Antichrist named by the Scriptures. Vow to the most constant opposition, adversary of all belief and of any affirmation of truth, man had also toppled all that bore the character of the divinity or any resemblance thereof. 
And if the idea of a God still remained, it was because man putting himself in the place of his creator had made the universe into a temple in, in which he played the God. And this is the triumph of these ideas at Vatican II, the same language, a man-centered mass, a man-centered theology, theology of the body of Pope John Paul II. So man replacing God, isn't it? And this, this at, at every level, man has replaced God. Cardinal P goes on to say, the struggle was unequal and we knew which side would carry off the victory and which no defeat. The more man seemed to triumph, the more surely we predicted his fall. And to speak as do the holy books, one of those catastrophes whose blast long echoes in the ears of those who hear. History had taught us that God hides himself for a certain time, and that he seems at times to retreat before his enemies, but that these apparent defeats are of the moment, and are only the wise and cunning tactics of providence, after which he takes back the position and delivers the final blow. More than once it seemed to us that the heavenly spirits, weary of the long success of the triumphant rebellion, adopted the language of the prophets and said, Arise, O God, and may it not be given to man to prevail. So he's saying all the Freemasons and all the enemies of Christ seem to be having victory after victory after victory, demolishing Catholic countries, demolishing the Catholic constitutions, demolishing the religious orders. And, and he didn't live. He lived long before Vatican II. He would be blowing the trumpet against the godless and <clears throat> modernist Rome and the political leaders as well. So Carlo P. goes on to say, that is why notwithstanding the great work of social reconstruction undertaken by so many architects at once, we will suffer in spite of ourselves the consequences of the sins of our fathers. So long as, so long as we have not rebuilt in the heart of the nation the temple they overturned. Men speak of a great party founded in the name of order and compromise. Only one party can save the world, the party of God. And we Americans need to hear this. Only the party of God, of Christ the King, can save this nation. Not the Republicans and not the Democrats, that's for sure. He goes on to say, there alone in the party of God, there alone is salvation. Renounce our dreams of independence from the Supreme Being and submit to Him. Make no mistake, the burning question and the question that troubles the whole world is not between man and man. It is between man and God. If we were to adopt a single rule of action, it would be to reestablish all things in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, ah, oh, we are profoundly moved as we utter this sacred name among you for the first time, this saving name that we will have so often to repeat. For other foundation no man can lay, but that which is laid by the hand of God, which is Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 3. So here it is. This is, this is what President Trump would be hearing from a good cardinal and bishop today, our Pope. President Trump come to realize the only answer is Jesus Christ the King. Forget Biden. He's, he rejected Christ long ago. And he's near his death and he's near his terrible judgment. And then Cardinal P says, the God whose minister, whose ambassador we shall be among you, that is, the bishop is an ambassador of Christ, the priests are ambassadors of Christ, will not be vague The God whose minister, whose ambassador we shall be among you, is not that vague, complacent God, whose tutelary authority is invoked by today's materialism, taking fright and wishing to defend its pleasures and its idols against the new wave of invaders, firmly resolved to pay him no tribute in return, and certainly not to offer him any sacrifice. Our God is he who gave his law to men, 
who came down to earth and who spoke in the person of Jesus Christ, who is his son and his envoy. Outside of Jesus Christ, there is no other Messiah or revelation or Savior. Both God and Jesus Christ are to be found by us only in the Catholic Church. And now we have to add the Catholic Church of Tradition, of course, not the Vatican II Church. Whoever does not listen to the Church of Catholic Tradition is in our eyes worse than an infidel. That goes for all of modernist Rome. They want to reform and make a separate church, a different church. And they can try all they want, Pope Francis and his rotten clergy. But they won't succeed. And then lastly, he says, therefore, to replace all these things under the legitimate empire of God, of Jesus Christ, and of the church, everywhere combat that sacrilege which puts man in the place of God and which is the chief crime of, the, of our modern age. Resolve anew by the precepts of the counsels of the gospel and by the institutions of the church all the problems that the gospel and the church had already resolved. Education, family, property, power. To reestablish a Catholic balance between the div diverse conditions within society. To pacify the earth and give citizens to heaven. Such is our mission. Cardinal Pia Poitier, which was almost word for word, verbatim, expressed by the great Pope St. Pius X. What I just read was also almost verbatim in the first encyclical of Pope Pius X. So today, what's all the big issues? Education, family, property, power. And the church has always had the answer. Education, give the youth the truth, not lies of evolution, atheism, socialism. Family, the Democrats and the rotten modernists and liberals want to destroy the family by divorce, contraception, by confusing the gender, genders, these perverse agendas of the sodomites. But no, the Catholic Church defends the family. The father is head of the house, the mother is the heart, the children are the happy blessings. Property. What happened in Hawaii recently is an, uh, and it happened in many other places as well, almost exactly the same with a microwave power, fake fires, and stealing of property to establish socialism. Taking the, the, the even, even Trump mentioned this in, in this talk, China is buying up all the American farmland, along with Bill Gates, who's probably given it to them as well. Uh, but this is socialism and communism. And the Catholic Church has vehemently always defended the right to own private property, to own your own land, to own your own territory, and to work that land, and to prosper and be productive with that land. But all this is falling with communism and socialism, as the Virgin Mary said, said would happen. If we don't return to Christ the King, it's not enough to just turn back to some vague idea of God. God bless America. God bless our country. We have to be more specific because God is not some nebulous being. He did become man. He did take on a face and hands and feet to die on the cross for our redemption. He gave his heart. And he asked that his heart be put on the flag of France, which the king refused. He wants his heart on the American flag. That's the only answer. And anything short of that will be disaster and ruin. And maybe Trump will get in and spare us the hard slavery coming. But he's only in for a short time. And we have to be truthful. He was the one maybe deceived. Maybe he sees that now. He was deceived by Fauci and their crew. Uh, by pushing the whole, the whole uh, long-nosed mosquitoes in the arm. He was a warp speed, you know. He fell into that whole trap, knowingly or unknowingly. So, if if at the, at the best, Trump will be just a 
a little pause in the fast fall, the free fall of decadence. He'll be, God will spare us a little four years, maybe, maybe. But still, it's not the answer. If Trump, if the, the Pope, if the leaders would listen to our Sacred Heart of Jesus and Mary, consecrate the country to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and Mary, things would turn around, the enemies and Biden would drop dead with a heart attack. He would, God would set, uh, he would set internal war in the enemy's camps, just like he did with Holofernes and Judith. And they would be fighting each other, and the enemies and the globalists would all collapse. All of it, if we just submitted to the reign of Christ the King, the sweet reign of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which is very sweet. And it's not cruel, ripping up children in their mother's wombs who have a chance, a whole life ahead of them. And then abortion is sinful in, in two main ways. It kills the child and it kills his chance to obtain heaven because they can't be baptized. So it's a, it's a hideous crime. And this, is, this would stop in the sweet reign of Christ the King. Now, Trump came out against abortion, which was good. But he was wrong. And, th and this must be clear in your minds. He was wrong to make an exception for rape, for extreme medical need. And the third reason, I can't remember what it was. He gave three exceptions to abortion, but there is no exception. You cannot kill a life if it's wanted or not. The mother must bring that baby to term because that's a human life and God has plans for that child. And how many saints are in heaven who were unwanted? Think of Saint Zita. She was despised by her parents. They hated her. And some saints really suffered and were rejected by their own parents, but became saints. So President Trump, that's a correction. That's a correction. You cannot give an exception for anything for abortion. No exceptions. So education, family, property, power, and authority. And of course, St. Paul shouts this loud and clear, all authority comes from God. And the state does not have the right to overthrow the laws of God, the commandments of God, and to ignore them. The state doesn't have that right. And the state that does, that country will perish. The country will not adore you. The country that will not honor you, O God, and obey you will be destroyed. And Our Lady of Fatima, the sweet, tender mother, our sweet flower, she's called the lily, she's called the cinnamon, she's called the, 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 the cooing dove in the scripture, she's called the enclosed garden, she's called the rose, she has all these beautiful titles. This sweet, tender mother warned at Fatima, whole nations are going to be blasted off the earth, annihilated, annihilated. And why? Because man wants to worship man and Satan too now, instead of Christ the King. So let's have it very clear in our minds. We sons of the Catholic Church, we sons of the great popes, we sons of the Blessed Virgin Mary in battle, we proclaim the kingship of Christ and we tell all the political leaders, all your efforts are in vain unless you hold high the reign of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and his laws because Christ is not an option he is not some vote he is not some choice between Muhammad and Allah and some other fakes I am the way I am the truth I am the life there is no other way to the Father but through me may the Virgin Mary hasten the hour of her great victory which we long for with all our hearts and when we pray the rosary let it be so many, so many cries of our heart and our soul to bet to the heart of Mary to come and overthrow the enemies of Jesus Christ and to establish once again the reign of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. O Mary, conceived without sin, 
O Mary conceived without sin. O Mary conceived without sin. And for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.